Hi guys, it's Grandma Cheap Cheap and welcome back to my vintage kitchen here in Southern Colorado. Um, you all have given me very good thumbs up and feedback on my vintage kitchen series so I will continue with that and, and just an offshoot of that vintage kitchen will be baking, baking 101. A uh, couple of years ago when I retired I started baking. I've always been a great or yes a great home cook but not so much of a baker was I. So I started to bake and I really like it and I'd like to share with you some of the things that I have been uh, learning uh, as a, a baking person. So in this episode I'm going to introduce you to flour 101. Now there's all kind of flowers out there. I personally like King Arthur flower. I have um, learned that or I have been introduced to that flower and I'll leave the link below for kingarthur.com. Now you know I like King Arthur because I do have this Butter Keeper, it's from King Arthur. You can uh, ask for a catalog to be sent out. But this is very good. I promised you a, a review on it. And in lieu of the review, let me just give it a thumbs up. I found that it hasn't melted. I'm sure maybe when the months get hotter in July, August, or when it gets really hot in here, I may have to put this in the refrigerator and take it out a little before I use it. But uh, that's the King Arthur Butter Keeper. And here is the King Arthur... Um, Sourdough. Um, sourdough recipes will be coming to you because back in the 70s and 80s, sourdough was a big item in the baking kitchen. Now, um, I have used this Hungarian high altitude flour. I, when I first got into trying to uh, teaching myself how to bake, I got this high altitude flour because I thought it would give me a, um, a heads up on my baking, but I didn't find this to be terribly um, better than uh, the King Arthur flour. So um, this is available. It's called Hungarian High Altitude Flour and uh, I have used it. I also bought this Atkinson Biscuit Mix. I made this um, a couple of times and I really like it. It has butter flakes in it. Uh, I saw this on Food Network channel with Sunny Anderson and her grandmother's um, biscuits are made out of Atkinson. The only reason I don't use it too often is because the shipping cost as much as the product did. So this, unless I could find this locally or in my travels, um, Atkinson's flour is great but it's not uh, close to me where I can buy it in my supermarket. Good product though. Okay, um, now we'll go through the flower. This is King Arthur has many, many types of flowers. Here's the all-purpose flower. I think this is bread flower. Whole wheat and cake flour. Um, cake flour also comes in a, I think it's a swan's uh, cake flour, but um, I just like the King Arthur products and we'll experiment as we go. So I'm going to move this aside. My all-purpose flour also, um, I have this large container that I put, um, put in bulk. 
uh, flour and bulk in here for um, just dredging um, meats or if I just don't want to open a new bag of flour I will use this and this uh, came from Walmart. Mr. got this for me and I think it was ten dollars but it's awfully good to have for your bulk sugars or your bulk um, flour such as this. Anything that you have a lot of. Now um, one of my subscribers asked about why do you sift flour? Here's an old vintage sifter. Isn't this an oldie but goodie? But uh, I think in my strawberry cookie bars, I did sift the flour. Uh, I just do it automatically when the um, dry ingredients are ready to be incorporated with the wet ingredients because I guess I'm older. Back in the day, everybody sift flour. You sift flour all the time. And that was because of impurities coming from the flour mill or um, way back in the day, bugs would could get in your flour or whatever. It's just a habit. So um, now with the refinement of more quality control in the flour mills or food service. You don't have to sift flour, but if you want to keep along a vintage kitchen, these oh, these are so therapeutic just to sift flour. It just takes a minute. Or either you could get a large strainer such as this and just sift it. It's certainly up to you. Or not sift it at all. Uh, I would venture to say that in sifting your flour, it does give a more airy product in the end because, I'm not sure if this is hiding me, an uh, airy product in the end because in storing and in packaging, your flour can settle. And if you don't give it a little bit of air, you might have a denser product. So you might consider sifting. Okay, what else do I have? Oh, and, and baking. Baking is an exact science. So it's not like uh, in cooking where you can substitute, not put an item in or a ingredient in. Baking is pretty exact. So your um, measuring spoons and your measuring cups are going to be um, your best friend. If your oven varies a little bit, uh, if you're not sure of your oven, and if you're like me where I've cleaned my um, stove top so much that the that the temperature is off, uh, you can get this little device in the supermarket actually and um, hang it in your oven door and that will uh, tell you what your temperature is. So I have to use that. Is that it? I think so. Well this is time for a giveaway. Um, like I said, I love my King Arthur Butter Keeper, and I think you will too. It's an awfully nice little uh, addition to your kitchen. You just simply put water in the bottom of your uh, Butter Keeper. Put your butter, um, um, not cold butter, but room temperature butter in the top and just put it upside down. I love it. And if you are a subscriber to this channel, if you um, want to be considered for this giveaway, uh, this is a stoneware butter keeper. I just ordered it off the internet because I didn't see one 
that I wanted to uh, give away as a gift. Just leave a comment in the comment section that you want to be considered for this giveaway. And next Sunday, which is Mother's Day, I will announce the winner of this Stoneware Butter Keeper. I'm not going to open it because I want it to stay um, perfectly intact in this package. I did find one at the at the um, thrift shop a, a week or so ago and this one is actually bigger than mine and I was going to give it away but I think I'm going to keep this for myself it might hold maybe a stick and a half of butter but it's just white I like it it has butter in French beurre B-E-U-R-R-E I didn't take French, so I'm not even going to try. And then it has butter on that size. But um, I like these little butter keepers. Please go along on this baking journey with me here in my vintage keep kitchen. Uh, you can write me at GrandmaCheapCheap at gmail.com. Follow me on Twitter at GrandmaCheapo. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys, and be blessed. Bye-bye.